Hello everyone. A man bitten by a dog was being treated for rabies in the hospital. But the treatment was not working and the man looked as if he was going to die. Having made the assumption that the man had only three days to live, the doctor advised him to make his last will. The man took a piece of paper and started to write. He wrote and wrote until finally the doctor said to him, That certainly is a lengthy will you are making. The man raved, Will? No way. I am just making a list of people I am going to bite. Friends, in today's gospel, Jesus urges us not to take revenge on someone or continue to hate the wrongdoer but love him instead. Before examining the text, let us briefly review some of the themes that we have explored thus far. Three weeks ago, we started to read the Sermon on the Mount which is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. The sermon begins with the eight Beatitudes in which Jesus addressing the crowds gathered around him, explain the types of people who are the recipients of God's favor and grace. Then he turned to his newly chosen disciples, most of whom were fishermen, and said that they are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That is, like salt in the taste of food, his disciples ought to add the right kind of flavor to the dull world and to people whose lives have become tasteless. Like light in the prevailing darkness, his disciples are to shine or make their faith visible to the world. Moreover, they must retain their distinctiveness so as to have an influence on society in a positive way for God's glory. And then he told them that he did not come to destroy or nullify the Old Testament laws or exhortations of the prophets but to efficiently fulfill or demonstrate its true significance and value. Last week we saw Jesus radicalizing and extending four of the laws, murder, adultery, divorce and oaths. He modified and expanded the law that forbids 1. Murder to include anger, resentment and refusal to forgive. 2. Adultery, to include even just a lustful look or thought. 3. Divorce, by advocating lifelong fidelity between the spouses in order to avoid the danger of falling into sin. And 4. False oaths, by telling them to avoid taking oaths altogether. Friends, in today's Gospel, just like that of last week, Jesus once again rectifies two more Old Testament laws, namely 1. The law of retaliation or the ancient saying an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth and 2. The law of hating one's enemies. Friends, what does the law of retaliation mean? The law of retaliation refers to a retaliation authorized by law in which the punishment corresponds to the nature and degree of the offense of the wrongdoer. Friends, the days before Moses, the natural reaction to any crime, sin or offense was an open retaliation. For instance, we see the unrestrained retaliation taking place in the story of Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve. When they both came to worship before the Lord, Cain offered some of the fruits of the soil and Abel offered the firstborn lambs from his flock. God accepted Abel and his offering but rejected Cain and his offering. The text does not mention any reason for the rejection. Some people suggest that Cain's offering was rejected because it was offered according to the dictates of his own mind, not with faith because he did not come from the heart but was done grudgingly just to fulfill the law. But I don't think this is necessarily the case, since the laws regarding sacrifices had not yet been given at the time. It is possible 
that both had received some instructions on what constitute an acceptable sacrifice for God, or that Cain had committed other wrongs that would make his offering unacceptable to God. Friends, whatever the reason for God's rejection, this made Cain very angry and rejected. He invited his brother to the fields and killed him. God spoke to Cain about the murder and urged him to do the right thing so that he would be accepted. Friends, in the book of Genesis we have another story of the uncontrolled revenge. Lamech, a fifth generation descendant of Cain, apparently murdered a man who hit him and returned home without any sense of guilt and boasted of his strength before his wives. So, Moses gave the law of just retaliation, meaning an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, rather than allowing excess revenge. The law was essentially to function under the principle, the punishment should fit the crime. This law is explicitly stated in three different places in the Old Testament, Exodus, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. But unfortunately, the people abused or misused the law to personally avenge any insult or crime or injury inflicted on them. Many times they justified their retaliation of striking back or getting even by saying they were just acting according to the God-given law. However, Jesus came and replaced this exacting law of retaliation with the law of non-retaliation or non-violence or the law of love. Friends, here Jesus is not saying that his disciples should not oppose evil or withstand evil. He rather taught them that they should respond to evil with good. He instructed them therefore to 1. Offer their left cheek as well if someone strikes them on their right cheek. 2. To give their cloak as well if someone forcibly or unjustly takes away their tunic. 3. To walk an extra mile with someone who compels them to walk one mile with them, and to willingly do extra work for someone who forces them to work for them against their will. 4. To give whatever they have if someone asks of them, and not to refuse to help anyone who asks them. In other words, Jesus wanted his disciples, one, to refuse to return insult for insult, because a slap on a face is an insult, and it is intended to provoke a reaction of confrontation. Two, to give others more than what they ask, not just the inner tunic, but also the outer garment. Three, to go beyond what is asked of them. Four, to do good without expecting anything in return. 2. As for the second law, there is no direct reference in the Old Testament which com commands people to love their neighbor and hate their enemy, but is inferred. As a matter of fact, in today's first reading from the book of Leviticus, we read that God instructed Moses to tell people, You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Friends, so Jesus here perhaps projected the prevailing mentality and practices among the Israelites during his time, particularly in Talmud, a book that contains Jewish laws and traditions. Many laws are heavily biased in favor of the Jews against the Gentiles. For instance, in the Talmud, it is written that if a Gentile hits a Jew, the Gentile must be killed. If a Gentile loses something, a Jew may keep it even if he knows who the owner is. A Gentile must pay wages to the Jews, but a Jew does not have to pay wages to the Gentile, and so on. Jesus strongly rebuked the Jews for these oral doctrines or written down traditions and instructed his disciples to love both their neighbors and enemies. 
according to Jesus, neighbors are those who do good, love and greet others, and enemies are those who do evil, hate and persecute others. Jesus also taught them what it actually means to love their enemies. He called them to love their enemies as themselves through greetings, prayers and good deeds. Finally, Jesus told his disciples that he demands all these because they are the children of God the Father, who provides sun and rain which are essentials to both the good and bad, the just and the unjust. Thus, Jesus called on his disciples to be perfect just as God the Father is perfect. Friends, some people in the world choose the path of excess retaliation violence and vengeance to deter and fight of people and as a result thousands of innocent people are also killed every day throughout the world. Some others in the world choose the path of exact retaliation or retribute to justice. If they perceive injustice in their interpersonal relationships or in their workplace and if there is an apology for misconduct, they feel morally justified in their outrage. They think that people should receive what they deserve. But friends, as followers of Christ, we are expected to imitate the perfection of God. Imagine, given the human instinct for revenge, if all human beings apply the law of retaliation, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, literally and liberally, today most of us would be blind and toothless. Friends. Our Lord Jesus calls us to choose the path of non-violence or non-retaliation, to love both our neighbors and enemies as ourselves. He wants us to greet and pray for both the righteous and the unrighteous. He says that we must go an extra mile, that is freely show mercy, compassion, care, generosity, love, help and offer forgiveness to all, even to those who do not deserve it. However, we must remember that when we try to become like our Heavenly Father, we might be seen as losers by worldly standards, but winners in God's sight. God sees us holy, blameless and beautiful and crowns us winners because we are His children. Amen. God bless you.